I harvested some apple mint to dry. We've got five beautiful blackberries and three strawberries. Happy Friday, friends. I thought I was going to get this video done <laughs> before the rain came back in, but uh, yeah, I wasn't so lucky. But I was out working in the garden. I said, you know what? Ding, ding. We need to talk about the strawberries and we need to talk about the fertilizer because a few of you have asked what fertilizer am I giving my blackberries and my strawberries because, you know, they're, uh, they're growing like crazy and producing. But the strawberries, and I'm looking over there at them, but I'm going to get wet. We have some fairly large strawberries and uh, we're losing them all of a sudden. They're getting bite marks after the net went on. So after some research and really looking, it's only the fruit, mice. So I will be setting three to four traps per bed and I have four beds and I'm fixing to catch whatever it is and I do believe it's mice. Um, let me step right out here and I'm gonna get this one strawberry and show you what I mean. Beautiful strawberry. Let's see, right here. Can you see the bite mark? Yeah. Every strawberry has a bite. If it would be a slug or something like that, I would see evidence across the pine straw. I would see evidence across the leaves. It's only the fruit. And so I pretty well have determined, and I'll know once I set the traps when this next rain band goes through, I'm gonna set some traps I'm not worried about Lou, the outdoor kitty, because she's not getting in the net. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we've worked too hard to lose our strawberries because of mice. And um, they do move to the berries. So I'm going to have to see what to do about the berries. But yeah, I do believe we have a mice problem. But anyway, talking about the strawberries... I'm fixing to turn the camera around, and I'm going to show you what I feed my berries. Um, I feed them before even blooms start pretty heavy um, with one thing, and then I'll come back, and as they're producing, I'll feed them something else, and then once season is over, I let them go dormant. I don't bring back feed and for my zone, which is 8B, till the end of February. But let me show you because it's not too late because a lot of you, I think, are about a month behind me. So you may be able to get you some of this and really bump your crop up on your berries. Okay, y'all saw me use this fertilizer, this Dr. Earth fruit tree fertilizer around the base of all of my fruit trees because it is a 552. But at the beginning, before I start seeing blooms or anything, about the end of February, in the holes, I will actually, you see there's strawberries here, there's other berries and grapes. I'll actually put a handful down in the hole of the fruit. Following that, starting in March, and I think I showed you guys in March that I did this. This is what I feed my berries once a month. I'm not heavy handed with it, but this is what I actually feed my berries. So I'm gonna hold this and let you guys screenshot. There you go. And I wanna show you something. This is a 544. Now, remember, I start with a 552. I am concentrating on the nitrogen and the phosphorus. Not so much the potash, which is the number two. Remember, I call that the central vitamin. This is to get it going. Let's move here. I'm still high on nitrogen, which berries do like a little bit more nitrogen. I'm even amounts of my phosphorus and the potash. That's because this is where you're going to get the blooms from your um, phosphorus. My brain left me and you're gonna get the vitamin from the potash. These are very, very important right here when the blooms start coming in and the berries. And this is the best one that I have found. 
Now, while we're out here, this is what I just got through spraying my entire garden with, all my plants. All of you have asked, what do I use? You've seen me use the powder for years, the Captain Jack Dead Bug. Well, last year, I was told they came out with a liquid. So, I did order four of these last year so I could have plenty. You can get this in a powder, kind of like a seven dust, but this is organic. And this stuff is amazing. So I'm gonna move in and let you screenshot. I mean, it does various, various bugs, not just what's on the front. And it's already pre-mixed and ready to use. Now I will say I used a fourth of this this morning when I sprayed, but I don't spray often. Um, maybe every two weeks because let me show you what I put at the base of all of my plants. Okay, I'm in the floor of my garden shed. Garden town. Guys, I sprinkle a little bit of this at the base of every plant. Not only is it acting as a slow release fertilizer because as it gets watered in, it will slow release, but this stuff stinks so bad that so far, I've never had, knock on wood, any problems, especially with my squash and my cucumbers uh, because of the, the vine bores. And I think it's because, I'm guessing, because of this stinky smell. But I do, I put this stuff at the base of every plant, just like a little granule around it. And you can also put this in a little jar of very warm water, dissolve it, and you can paintbrush this in at the base of your squash and zucchini plants. I showed you guys, I think, last year or year before. Never had a problem. Y'all look at this. My sun sugar, it's not yellow yet. It's gonna get there, so I'm holding off on picking it. I'm probably gonna pick it tomorrow, and I will have my first taste of a tomato on what is tomorrow. May, I'm going to guess the 4th, 5th, I've lost my dates. But you can say the 1st of May, I'm going to have a taste of my very first tomato. And here's an Arkansas Traveler. I noticed this this morning. But I've got tomatoes on 80% of the plants. There's three beautiful ones. And let's see, that is a better boy. They're gonna be big tomatoes. I want you to look up in here. There's four here. Here's one. But look at the blooms. This is the first year I'm trying a 42 day. I actually bought the seeds last year, never planted it. So I am tickled pink over this. In a couple of days, I'll harvest some zucchini and it's doing amazing. Now I'm standing up. Now I'm five, six, and these are about chest high. Got some more zucchini in here. Our squash is coming on. I mean, look at the size of these plants. Couple of more squash. I'm gonna stand over here by the okra, but there's the rest of the tomatoes that we started. That was the second round. And we're just gonna run them with the string method like y'all have seen us do for years. See, they're doing great. Remember last year, guys, I couldn't find borage and you amazing friends sent me some seeds and look at this. I've got some beautiful, beautiful borage. Look at my little banana peppers, guys. These are the two celebrities I bought at the nursery, the Louisiana nursery, and they were little tiny things. Well, they're not little tiny no more. And I am seeing some blooms, so. I hope they do good because I actually do buy the celebrity uh, from Hoss Tool. Um, that's always been my go-to. Our top pick peas finally germinated, but I think they needed heat. 
and they are getting 90 degree heat, so they're finally coming on. I replanted this. This was Contenders. Tried it twice, nothing germinated. I came back and planted some Jade. That's the only Contender that germinated. So I'm waiting to see if the Jade will come up. Here is two Contenders. I'm already seeing some blooms on it, but I did reseed the same time I did the Jades. I've seen nothing yet. Three times is a charm, guys. The contenders came up. I used a different pack. Um, so that's what I may have to do is open this pack back up and plant it over here. Now these are the Red Rippers. All germinated but one because I had a row of four on each side. And every one of these germinated of the Red Rippers. And I have five running on each side of the fence. And guys, look at this beauty. Geranium. Remember, I'd bought those little plants and planted them. And then I come back with Allison. And look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? I went all the way around because as these get a little bit taller, some do cascade down. But look at them little blooms. And these were all seed started. This is various types of zinnias. They're starting to bloom and showcase. And here's the other side of the zinnias. Now what you're gonna see here is a couple of bulbs um, that Buddy stuck there till we can get these in their permanent spot. And I can't remember right now. I showed y'all last week. My brain, my brain has left me, y'all. We've been without power 20 hours and it finally come back on. I don't know how we ended up in a garden walk. Today's Friday, we supposed to do that on Sundays. <laughs> but we started off with the fruit which led me down that rabbit hole to answer y'all's questions. And somehow we walked the garden. But look, I said, buddy, what color? Because I had to make sure my color. He said, it's overripe. It should have been yellow before it went orange. And he's right because it busted right there. I mean, it split. So it's done got soft. So I missed it. I'm not going to eat a squishy tomato. I'm, I'm, I, there's a texture thing. But anyhow, ooh, it's beautiful. But yeah, see, I missed my opportunity. Guys, I didn't see it. <laughs> it was down in, oh, I got something to show you before we end the video. I got to go to the sugar shack. I'm going to drop my berries. I got to show y'all I got something in the mail. And it's going to be a project we're going to do another four weeks. So, and we're going to talk about it. I don't even know what I'm supposed to name this video. Cause we just all over the place. I put my apple man here till Buddy can run my string and I can hang it with clothespins to dry. So it'll be fine sitting here. Okay, the main reason for this video, <laughs> besides the fruit and what I feed and what I spray. The other day, Miss Tammy, our good friend that you see in the chats all the time, sent me some sassafras leaves. Now, she asked me, she goes, Lippy, do you want some? And I was like, yes, please, because I haven't found a sassafras tree in this area. I'd like to get my hands on one and grow myself because there's a story about sassafras. But anyhow, the leaves made it and they were packaged amazing. But I'm gonna show you, actually, I got them day before yesterday. Oh, Tammy, did I email you to tell you I got them? <laughs> I don't rem we've been without power, so y'all, it's been horrible. But let me show you how I'm drying my sassafras leaves, and then we're going to talk about it. And this is nothing more than a laundry bag. And I've just got it hooked up here at the top with clothespins. And this is what I have my sassafras leaves in drying. And I'll come in, because I'm in the sugar shack every day, and I'll just kind of bounce it around because it gives it airflow. And guys, I'm gonna tell you, 
this is the best thing to dry your herbs with. Now, when he gets my string hung back up, I will move this up to the center of the room, but it's fine where it's at right now. Got a few little droppings here, but it's no major deal. But that is sassafras leaves. <laughs> I have you propped up on my desk light. Mm -hmm. See if I kind of move it a little bit. I don't know where my tripod is. I, I, it might still be in the kitchen. Was that the last place we visited? Yes, the corn dip. Y'all, let me tell you, this is going to be a hot mess video. Let me tell you about the corn dip before we talk about the sassafras. Remember I said the next day it was going to make a good lunch for Buddy and I. Well, lo and behold, which would have been yesterday, Power said, boop, and it just rained. And I said, oh, my God, because power went out. We actually divide the rest of the area. Power went out Sunday, and these folks across the street from me and back did not receive power until Tuesday night around 730. Today's Friday. No, no. Wednesday. Excuse me. Wednesday. And then the power goes back out yesterday morning. And it was out till, it was late in, late at night, nine o'clock maybe, something like that, before power was restored. So thank God for Mr. Craig across the street, because buddy, we have a generator that's directly hooked up, but you got to do a few little things here, there, click, punch, and I don't understand it. So... Thank goodness for Mr. Craig, because Buddy showed him. And as soon as the power went out, it wasn't five minutes later. Here come Mr. Craig. Okay, Lippy, you ready? So I've got the inside down pat of what I need to do, because there's stickers there. The outside, there was some things that I didn't understand. Well, that's being corrected today, because Buddy's off today. And he's put the box in, and he's working to where all I do is go out there, and I hit a switch and I get power because our generator is not a pull cord, it's a push button. So I just go into the pantry, turn the main off and some other stuff. I come out here, I hit three little buttons, boom, we have power. So that's how uh, he's setting it up. So we got a new box. He already had the wiring, uh, the breaker and all of that. Because remember he had run 220 here well, now the stove in here is also going to operate because he put it in the box. So that's what he's working on today because it looks like this is going to happen quite often because it's been happening once a week, but now it's like twice a week for no reason. And of course, I think it's low maintenance. They're not maintenance in the trees and keeping them off the power lines. It's really poor maintenance, guys. Um, and I'm going to speak about that to our AEP Swepco. So... Yeah, they, I mean, not that I can do anything, but I'm going to give them a piece of my mind because they're supposed to s supply power to us. If you're not maintaining the lines, you're not supplying power. So, at least maybe I can talk to the right person. But anyhow, back to the sassafras. I need a cup of coffee. We ought to just call this lippy and a cup of coffee chit-chat. <laughs> but the sassafras. When Miss Tammy asked me, did I want some sassafras? And I was like... Oh, yes, please. So she sent me pictures of the tree to show me, you know, this is sassafras. Now, had I not known, um, I'm glad she sent me pictures, but I already knew what a sassafras tree looked like. So I was like, most definitely. But I told her, I said, there's a story about that. And a lot of you may not know, but my first cousin actually wrote um, three books. And she's no longer with us. Uh, I believe she was in her late 70s when she passed her 80s. Anyway, her name was Hattie Mae, and she was a Leger. Well, she wrote these three books, and I'm going to try to find them on Amazon, and I'm fly, and I'm going to link them in the description just for you guys to go look at because inside these books was actually stories of my mom growing up and her siblings. Some of the names have been changed, um, and I don't really know why unless 
she didn't get permission from their generation of children. I don't know, but my mom's name wasn't changed. And my mom is Eula May. And in those books, it spoke about, because they're, they're, they're true stories, um, love stories too within, just great novels. But it talked about my mom and the sassafras tree. My mom didn't just use the sassafras as gumbo filet, which some of you probably contributed to gumbo filet, which you can thicken gumbo with, but you can also thicken stews and soups and everything else. And a lot of you may know that you put gumbo filet when you get ready to serve your bowl of gumbo. But we didn't just use sassafras for that. Mom made sassafras tea, and we're gonna make sassafras tea. Now, if I had been given the root we'd be making root beer. Yes, my mom made us root beer out of the root. She would steep the root and then pull the root out, strain, put sugar in it, and then top it off with water so it was a cloudy. And then if she had Watkins, um, I believe it was Watkins, it was a root beer extract. She would add a little bit of that to really ramp up the root beer flavor, but she would make us root beer thinned uh, in color. And in this book, it talks about my mom and the connection to the sassafras tree. And there's some stories in it too. Um, I have the books. Um, she sent them to me right after they were printed. And I read them every so often just to, just to put myself in back in the day when my mom was young, because my mom was born in 1923. So it kind of gives me that connection and it gives me a lot of back history of my family on my mom's side. Uh, beautiful, beautiful writing. I mean, she, she was a heck of a writer. So when she said sassafras, the last time I had sassafras was in 1992 that my Annie Lane which is my mom's sister-in-law. She's married to my Uncle Rodney. She had sassafras. We had sassafras tea. That was in 92. Uh, when mom moved back to South Louisiana in Benton and lived with, uh, with me, my cousin Alma Faye brought us some sassafras and I dried it and we had some fresh gumbo filet, but mom wanted some root beer and we didn't provide her that root beer, but I did find the root beer extract and I made her a glass of root beer because she passed 16 weeks after she was diagnosed. So that was in 94 and that was the last time I actually tasted it. The, I mean, you can buy it, you know, in the store, but I'm talking about true home dried gumbo filet. It was the last time I tasted it. So look how many years that's been. So from 94, to 24 is what, 30 years? If I'm doing my math right, I believe so. Yeah, 30 years. So yes, thank you, Tammy. Tammy did not know this story because I was like almost in tears because, you know, I get a lot of emails and stuff and you guys are so phenomenal about making things and gifting me things and y'all just don't know how I appreciate it. But that sassafras that's sitting over here now Tammy, you didn't know how personal it meant. But these books, if you enjoy reading, and they're very inexpensive, um, maybe there's some little short stories in the description of it. I really don't know. But I will try to find the link. Because I'm sure that my cousins are still, still have it offered on Amazon. If not, I'll find out where. And I'll put the link in. Um, yeah. Or, if we can't find them, then I'll read a paragraph out of each one, starting from the first, second, and third, because there was three books. And I'll just read a paragra paragraph when we do videos, just to give y'all a little back history of where did Lippy come from, you know? What was her roots? And they're all embedded in this book, or these books. So, yes, I am tickled to death to show y'all what we're gonna do with these leaves, but that's gonna be a month away. Now, I will say that here in the South, um, and I don't know if you know this, Tammy, but normally we don't harvest until August. 
on a full moon. That's when we were told to always harvest the leaves. I don't think it's gonna make a difference, but they say that that's at their peak of their flavor, the full moon in August, and then they are dried for four to five weeks, and then you crush them up. But hey, I think they're gonna be just fine because when I opened that bag, it was like that smell, that, oh, it's a smell. If you've never had fresh sassafras leaves smell, it's, it's amazing. But that is actually the history. So it may be different months depending on the origin because these things I, I know that can grow on, up on the East Coast, um, upstates, they're, they're very popular more in the South. Um, but yeah, you can grow sassafras up North, but I think it may be a different variety. I really don't know. And they're a very distinct tree because they have three different leaf shapes three different leaf shapes. And matter of fact, when they dry, because they're, I don't want to open that up, but when they dry, I'm going to pull all three out. It's how you know it's a true sassafras, because one's going to be a leaf of three, and they're, they're kind of wide. And then you're going to have like a, a mitten, sort of, two leaves, and then you're going to have the pointy single. It, they're very distinct. And it's the sassafras tree that actually grows these three distinct shaped leaves. So we'll look at that in a month and we're gonna make um, filet gumbo. I'm gonna show you how I make the tea. I can't show you the root beer because I don't have the root. But Tammy, if you can get me a piece of root, like maybe if you got little babies growing or something, <laughs> you can send me a piece of root because they do, they, they branch out like in clusters. But yeah, that's how you used to make the uh, root beer because that's kind of what it tastes like, sort of. But you got to put sugar in it. So we'll get two recipes out of it. And if I can get my hands on that root beer extract, which I hadn't seen in Coons ages, if I could get my hands on that, I'd make us a little glass of that root beer extract and we just bring all the memories back together. So... We're gonna have fun in about four weeks. But yeah, I'm excited to share that. My mint's gonna dry. That's gonna be two or three weeks. And of course, I plucked me some fresh leaves off because I'm fixing to make me a glass of ice water. And I'm gonna put a couple of those, uh, those mint leaves in it because that's the apple mint. Y'all, I'm addicted to that man, apple mint. I'm not gonna lie. Apple mint now is my favorite. And if that pineapple mint takes off because it's still a little puny if it takes off i won't be i'll have to grow an abundance of that for mo because he's going to be wanting pineapple water because that's what he's going to call it because last year when he tried the apple mint he called it apple water but guys i love mint in a glass of water i do i'm not big on lemonade but i'll drink it but give me a glass of water ice water and put some mint leaves in there and i'm in heaven miss betty buddy's going to do the video for you um, he's going to be sharpening some tools this weekend, and we're going to do a video on that on how he sharpens tools. And he also accepted this gadget. I don't know what it's called, and he's going to do a video on it. But it's very cool, very inexpensive, and this will be more towards your, your woodworking. So, uh, well, here's Buddy now. What is that little tool that you're going to demonstrate for them? What's it called? That little red thing. Oh, it's a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Circle cutting guide for a router, trim router. Did y'all understand that? Can you s slow that? A circle what a? Circle cutting guide. It's a circle cutting guide. For a trim router. For a trim router. Or you can, you know, you can run edges, straight lines. Y'all find out Saturday, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. YouTube don't know what to do with me. You know, they have to put you in categories. And they find my name and they're like, throw her back in T for trash. We'll pull her out later. Y'all, that's why I'm not in no algorithm because they can't figure out where to put me. I say, just put me in my own. Call it the lippy algorithm. Ag algorithm. Yeah, call me that. Because mm -hmm. I'm all over the place. But hey, this is real life. This is what we do. And this video is dragging on, and I don't know why, because I can't cut this off. I'm in the middle of a conversation. So I guess what I'll say is I'm going to sign off, and I'm going to see y'all tomorrow. 
or Mr. Buddy going to see y'all tomorrow, and I'm just going to be holding the camera. Because now i got to go get me some mint water, make me a cup of coffee afterwards, and figure out what we're going to do with the rest of the day. Pick limbs up, I can tell you. But as always, stay safe, stay well, and God bless. And if he has the generator thing done tomorrow, we'll get a sneak peek. Till the next one.